Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We celebrate you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, you are good. Father, you are kind. We celebrate you this morning. Thank you, Father. Be that glorified. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We want to welcome you to service this morning. Hallelujah. God is a good God. Welcome to service this morning, wherever you are connected from. Lift up your hands and just worship the King of Kings. And worship the Lord of Lords. Adore Him, magnify Him, glorify Him. Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise. We lift your name on high. You are worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. It's of His fullness that we have received. Thank you, Father. You are the reason why we are not consumed. Lift up your hands and adore Him. Lift up your hands and magnify Him. Hallelujah. We celebrate you. We adore you. We magnify you. We glorify you. Hallelujah. God is a good God, people. Lift your hands and give Him praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We celebrate you. We adore you. We magnify you. We glorify you. Thank you and thank you. Be that glorified. Thank you, Father. You are the reason why we are not consumed. Hallelujah. I want to welcome you to service this morning all over the world, wherever you are connected from. Thank you for joining. God is a good God. In Him we live. In Him we move. In Him we have our being. Oh, hallelujah. Is somebody excited? Lift your hands and adore Him. Lift your hands and magnify Him. Hallelujah. Let's begin today's service with Psalm 67. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, Psalm 67, verse 5, 6, and 7. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We celebrate you. We adore you. We magnify you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Say with me, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lift up your hands. I say, Father, to you be all the glory. You are the reason why I am not consumed. You are the reason why I am not destroyed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Psalm 67, verse 5. He said, Let the people praise thee, O God. Let the people praise thee, O God. Now look at the next. Let all the people, let all the people, not few, not some, let all the people, let all the people praise thee. Verse 6. What will happen? Verse 6. Say, Then. Hallelujah. Then. Hallelujah. Then, then shall the earth yield an increase. So there is a secret there. One of the ways to heal the earth, one of the ways to heal the earth, to cause the earth to do what it's supposed to do. One of the ways to repair the earth, especially in this season, in seasons like this, is to lift up our hands and say, thank you, Lord Jesus. Is to lift up our hands and praise God. So the earth is healed by the praises of the people. Look at it again, verse 5. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, we celebrate. Look at the verse 5. Let the people praise thee. Oh, God. Let all the people. Let all the people. Let all the people. Verse 6. Then. Say with me, then. Then shall the earth yield her increase. And God, even our God, shall bless us. Hallelujah. You know, as seasons like this, when the world is full of depression and fear, anxiety, worries, this is the time to heal the earth through praise. This is the time to heal the earth through praise. So God has given us solution. If all of us can lift up our hands. So wherever you are, just lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. You are the reason I live. You are the one for me. You are the one for me. Jesus, you are the reason I live. Yes, Lord. You are the one for me. You are the one for me. Savior, you, you are the reason I live. Hallelujah. You are the one for me. Yes, Lord. 
You are the one for me. You are, you are the reason I live. Glory. You are the one for me. Yes, Lord. You are the one for me. You are, you are the one for me. You are the one for me. You are the one for me. Yes, Lord. You are the one for me. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. He's the one for us, people. <laughs> Glory to God. You are the one for us. You are the one for us. You are the one for us. Yes, Lord. You are the one for us. You are the one for us. You are the one for us. You are, you are the reason I live. You are the one for us. Jesus, you are the one for us. You are the one for us. You are the one. Bible say, if God be for us, if God be for us, who can be against us? What's your answer? Say with me, nobody. Say it again, nobody. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Nobody, Lord. Thank you, Father. We celebrate you. Just lift up your hands. Let's just adore Him. Just magnify Him. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Magnify him. Let all the people praise thee. Let all the people praise thee. Then shall the earth yield her increase. We lift our hands in the sanctuary. Hallelujah. We lift our hands to give you the glory. We lift our hands to give you the praise. And we will we'll praise you for the rest of our days. Yes, Lord. We lift our hands in the sanctuary. We lift our hands to give you the glory. We lift our hands to give you the praise. And we will praise you for the rest of our days. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Glory to your name. Oh, we celebrate you. Malako shakala vara di shimane. Ega la koshi kabala fila ko maraki di shane. Hela braku fufa lesa ne kabala kusina badesh. Ega la kusha parake di a hale here. Somebody is getting here right now. Somebody is getting here right now. Somebody is getting here right now. Receive your healing. Receive your healing. I hear it in my spirit. Somebody is getting here right now. Jikala ha baro vela sapa kuta libanis. Egala kusaku jikala kubale fila hala mosh. Egali kabaru kushika de hila paradej. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Somebody's breakthrough has just come. In the midst of that despair, God has opened a door for you already. In the midst of that despair, that disappointment, somebody was disappointed just this week past. You had a disappointing news just this week. In fact, yesterday, God said, I should tell you, good news is coming for you. Before this time next week, good news is coming for you. The disappointment it hit you so hard, so hard, so hard, so hard because said that good news is coming. It's coming. Yes, yes. Thank you, Father. Just lift your hands and receive. I said, Father, I receive. Thank you, Father. God is repairing things. God is repairing things. God is repairing things. This is a season of praise. 
this is a season of praise. God said, I should tell you, I should praise him this week. Things will begin to get repaired. Mm -hmm. Everything that the devil has scattered will be rearranged. Mm -hmm. Put back in place. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Be that glorified. In Jesus, mighty name we are worship. Thank you, Father. Please receive those prophetic words. Receive them. Receive them. You, you will testify. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right. You see, I'm excited this morning because something good has happened. Hallelujah. Somebody shout glory to God. Hallelujah. Something great has happened in our midst. You see, for some time now, uh, I would say like two years now, two years plus, you know, the Lord took our ministry to a next level. We have been receiving songs. We have been receiving songs. We have been receiving songs from the Lord. You know, and, and we, we can't count them. We can't count them. There are so many of them. Hallelujah. There are so many of them. So many of them. And we've been thinking, what do we do with them? You know, just uh, keeping them uh, together, you know, recording them and keeping them. And, uh, you know, before I continue, let me, let me honor a man of God here. You see, uh, for many years I knew that inside of me there were songs. And I was telling uh, those close to me, you know, uh, mentioned, I said, I feel songs are inside. You know, when I hear people sing, I want to sing along. You know, the voice will come. <laughs> Glory to God. The voice will come. Hallelujah. But you see, I just knew. But after having an encounter, a period of encounters uh, with uh, God's servant, Pastor Paul in nature, I need to acknowledge this uh, life here, you know, because if you don't acknowledge the source of a thing, they can try. You see, people have graces. You know, people have graces. But after getting in, in touch with that ministry, stand up this gift. I remember coming the day I came close to him and I said something. I said to him, I love you, sir. He looked at me. He said, I love you too. I felt something move in my spirit. After that day, I began to notice songs were coming. So it's good to acknowledge that, you know, and to just praise God for his servant. Dr. Pastor Paul Enetje. Hallelujah. And so wherever you are, if you hear this, this is an offsuit from the grace of God upon your life. And songs have been coming. Many of them. And I believe God is, is a season to release them. Now listen to this. At the start of this COVID, when I began to hear about it, you know, and uh, before it came into Nigeria, I began to, you know, ask God, Especially when we had the first case, and there was a bit of panic, I said, God, what are the scriptures for us to stand upon at this time? And the Lord led me to the psalmist. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's, let's look at it. Glory to God. God is good. Thank you, Lord Jesus. It's a popular psalm. Malako shakala vele bi halako shikata nefi labrako shidish. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Psalm 91. And I read it, you know, read it through from verse 1 to the end, but a particular verse stood for me. Hallelujah. And that is verse 7. Verse 7. Eight, uh, verse 8, 9, and 10. Verse 8, 9, and 10. I read it. I said, this is the one to stand upon. Glory to God. Only with the eye shall that behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou has made the Lord, which is thy refuge, even the, the, the most high, the habitation. There shall no evil, verse 10, there shall no evil before thee, neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. I say, Yes, that's the scripture to stand upon, verse 10, Psalm 91, verse 10. There shall no evil before thee, neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. I began to pray with it. I began to speak it to people today. I said, this is the scripture to stand upon. And I share with the church. Hallelujah. But the, the more I meditated and reflected on that scripture, I asked the Holy Ghost, a song should be here. That moment, the song came. 
and I began to sing it. I was saying, it. if you have been following us live, you see there was a time I did a rendering of this song with my own voice, you know, just to release it to encourage people. Glory to God. And, you know, in the course of this COVID-19, one day I was praying, the Lord said, I think this song needs to go forth. Hallelujah. So I felt it. I said, yes, we need to push this song. So we spoke with our uh, music team and to the glory of God, they have been able to work on the song. Hallelujah. Our music director and our lead singer. Glory to God. Let me acknowledge them also on this platform. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And that's Sister Joy. Hallelujah. It's a lead singer in Love for God Church. Hallelujah. Sister Joy is a good name. It's a lead singer. He's a daughter that has followed. Hallelujah. Anointed singer. Anointed. She has a ministry there. And uh, our music director, Solomon Emolegu. So they're coming together with the team. They worked on the song and took it to the studio. And I can tell you, the song is out. Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. You know, I've been doing like a countdown. If I've been following. Say, rehearsals. I've been showing, giving you, sending you the rehearsals. And some of you have been downloading. Now the real stuff is out. So we're doing this this morning to, first of all, give God all the glory. Hallelujah. To give God what? All the glory. All the honor. Because every good and every perfect gift comes from where? From above. From the Father of light. With whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. So lift up your hands and say, Father, we thank you. For this next phase, new level we are brought to love for God Church and to the ministry of the world in love for God Church. Father, we lift up our hands to say thank you. We give you all the glory for taking our ministry, your work to the next level, to the ministry of songs. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for the inspiration is from you. A man can receive nothing, nothing at all said is given to him from above from heaven thank you for this one we are releasing today and all the ones we have in our archives and the many thousands and millions that shall come after this we say thank you it is your doing and it is marvelous in our sight thank you father take all the glory take all the honor ah thank you father take all the glory take all the honor Take all the glory. Take all the honor. Father, as we launch and dedicate this song, we say, let it go forth to the, for the blessing of mankind. Let it be a faith booster. As seasons of attack and depression, even seasons as this, COVID-19. Let every hearer be encouraged. Let faith rise in the heart and spirit of mankind. To fight the onslaught of the devil. Let the song bring men, draw men to your kingdom. If you believe, then you shall draw men. Let it heal the sick. Set the captives free. Wherever they sing it, let the devils depart. Thank you, Father. Take all the glory. We therefore dedicate this song in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, we pray. Holy Ghost, thank you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, uh, I guess I'll be waiting for a dedicated song you have not had. Now we're going to listen. It's about five minutes song. Just listen. And let, let me say this. In the course of this week, I believe, or next week, or this week, we're going to do a special broadcast, like a five minutes broadcast or so, where the link for how to play and download this song and please share the link. Let people keep downloading because it's going to be, it's going to turn around. Remember, when people praise, the earth is healed. So this song is a healing capsule. Glory to God. All right, India, can you just play right now? Play. In a time when the world is experiencing the casting down, there is hope for the believer because the word of God says 
no evil shall befall thee, and disaster no plague shall not come near your dwelling. No sickness, there shall no evil befall me. There shall no plague come near me. A thousand shall fall at my left hand. Shall not come near me, Lord. I believe it so.
if this sun can come out at seasons like this, when people are locked down, and yet God can cause this sun to be released, I tell you something. Listen, this season has better great things in your life. Mm -hmm. Listen, you may not have seen it. it. It has been an incubation period. And I, I speak prophetically. This has been like incubation period. Many hearing me today are coming into a brand new life. Many hearing me today are coming into a brand new life. Something new has just started in your life. I had it in my spirit. God said, this is the beginning of new things in people's life. This is the beginning of new things in people's life. Hallelujah. So something you say, now listen, God is saying, the former things have come to pass. Those things he told you have happened. He said, new things do I declare, and they shall spring forth. Begin to experience new things in your life. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. So we just thank God. Can you imagine that? This is a song given to us as a church. Something new is happening. Everyone that has despised you will come to your celebration. Everyone that has looked down on you will come to your glorification. So we listen to this song one more time then we're going to the message. We want to thank God for using us and giving us this privilege to release this song to the benefit of mankind. Hallelujah. So just play again. Play. In a time where the world is experiencing the casting down, there is hope for the believer. Because the word of God says no evil shall befall thee, and disaster no plague shall not come near your dwelling. No sickness, there shall no evil befall me, there shall no plague come near me. A thousand shall fall at my left hand, ten thousand at my right hand. Shall not come near me, Lord. I believe it's so. Oh, mm -hmm. 
Father, we celebrate you. Wherever you are, just lift up your hands and say, Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you again. We celebrate you. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. Father, as we listen to your word this morning, open our ears and our eyes to hear and to see. Send your word. Let your word change our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. We can we just say it Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel I feel excited. I just I just sense that God is, is doing new things already in people's life. I just sense that new things are springing forth already. By the release of this song, new things are springing forth already in people's life all over the world. New things are springing forth. New things are springing forth. Hallelujah. And this scourge is ending already. By the reason of this song. Thank you, Father. Angels are being released. Angels are being released. The earth is being healed right now. People's life, lives are being healed right now. Things are turning around right now. Thank you, Father. New things are springing forth right now. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. People's status of life are changing right now. Thank you, Lord. Blessings are being released right now. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, let's uh, go straight to the world and see how far that we're going to go this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, we, are, we have been talking about planning for tomorrow. Planning for tomorrow. And listen, if you didn't listen to last week's Sunday message, go back to it. Because you see, tomorrow is a mystery. Tomorrow is a mystery. Only in the hand of God. I said last week, every prediction of tomorrow by man is incomplete. It's incomplete. Only God knows tomorrow. So, planning, uh, let, let me just do a, a little recap here. Points here from last week. We said number one, last week number one, planning is about the next moment of one's life and affairs. The next moment of one's life and affairs. The future because no nobody plans for the past. Number two, everybody is planning and caring about the future directly or indirectly. At least, everybody is thinking about what to eat, what to wear, where to live. So everybody is planning directly or indirectly. Number three, from last week, we said no one can plan well. No one can plan well if he or she cannot manage change, chance, and circumstance. Because these three are a constant phenomenon of life. Things will keep happening. Things will keep changing. Circumstances will keep happening. This is very, very important. So you can't plan effectively if you cannot manage change and chance and circumstance. And you know nobody can manage that. For instance, all those who plan for this year, businesses that plan for this year, they forecasted for this year, and they saw they were going to make profit. But can you see, the advent of COVID-19 has changed everything. That's what we call circumstance. So no plan is complete without the management of circumstance, change, and chance. And the sad thing is that these three things, these three C's that can alter and topple a plan are only in the hand of God. Change. Change is constant. For instance, no, no matter how you love your children, you can't buy them the shoes they wear all their life because they keep changing. Did you see that? They keep changing. They keep changing. Even yourself, that's why you're keeping your weight. Checking, checking your weight. Because you keep changing. So change is constant. If you don't factor change into your plan, you will become a victim. 
Then chance, chance, what we mean by chance opportunities? The circumstances. If you read Ecclesiastes 8, 6 to 7, and Ecclesiastes 9, 11 to 12, I quoted it last week. You can effectively, effectively manage or plan if you cannot manage change, chance, and circumstance. Now, so because number four, because of the uncertainties of life, because of the uncertainties of life, what are the uncertainties of life? Change. What are the uncertainties of life? Chance. What are the uncertainties of life? Circumstances. Because of that, the best and perfect way to plan in life is through partnership with the one who knows tomorrow. God. Did you hear what I said? If you don't partner with God, who knows tomorrow? Change, chance, and circumstance will whip you. Will beat your hands down. We saw that last week. That it is only God that can declare the end from the beginning. Isaiah 46, 9 to 10. Meaning that anything God tells you, when you plan with God, God factors the end in the plan. Let me say it again. When you plan with God, God factors the end in the plan. So it's wise, it's wisdom not to neglect God and plan it. Because you can only see as far as now. You can only see as far as now. Even when you use experience to plan, the past to plan, it's not a perfect factor for planning. Number five, what we said last week, no man can also effectively lead his or herself. Why? Because we are all strangers and pilgrims on the earth. The earth is like a safari, like I said last week. We need a tour guide to take us around. Because it's a path that has not been charted by any man. It's an uncharted path. See, if you go where you've never been before, you need somebody to guide you through. That's why we ask for direction when we go to a new place. Why do people live their life as if they already know what is happening? No, that's wrong. Hallelujah. Then lastly, last week, we said that as Christians, number six, as Christians, we have got a big advantage. As Christians, we have got a big advantage over the world concerning planning for tomorrow. The sad thing is that we, don't, we are not making good use of it. We have got a big advantage. How can a child of God be planning like an unbeliever? You strategize, call, call strategist. Call them together, they sit down, they plan, they focus, they plan the project. And you, as a child of God, you neglect your advantage. They're not doing well. What is this advantage? That's what we stopped last week. John 16 and verse 13. Say with me, I've got an advantage over the world. Now listen to me. In that office where you work, or in that business, you have an advantage over your competitors. You have an advantage as a child of God. You have an advantage in that marketplace as a child of God. You have an advantage. Paradigm sheets are in the hand of this advantage. Look at it. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, watch this, he shall guide into what? All, not some, into all truth. All truth. That means everything you want to know, the Holy Ghost, the spirit of truth shall guide you. Now look at watch this. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, he shall speak. Now watch this. 
and he will show you things to come and he will show you things to come and he will show you things to come that's the future that's tomorrow things to come so planning for tomorrow as a christian if you neglect the holy ghost you are just you are just uh, you, you, i don't know what to call it how can you have the greatest advantage and you neglect it i wrote something here which i'm going to read for us later thank you lord jesus i'm going to read for, for us later so planning for the tomorrow for the Christian is all about engaging the Holy Ghost, engaging the Holy Ghost, engaging the Holy Ghost. You know, as a family, you, you want to plan, you sit with your wife. As a businessman, you want to plan, you sit with your staff member. Sometimes you invite your market survey people. And they will be planning. You will forget this personality that can make that is the game changer, the game changer, and that is the Holy Ghost. Look at this. How be it when He, the Spirit of Truth, is come, He will guide you into all truth. He will guide you into all truth. There is no question, no question, nothing you want to probe in and check that the Holy Ghost doesn't have an answer. He shall guide you into all truth, for He shall not speak of Himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, he shall speak, and he will show you things to come. He will show you things to come. So, this morning I'll be speaking on engaging the Holy Ghost in planning for tomorrow. Engaging the Holy Ghost in planning for tomorrow. So this is a part two of planning for tomorrow. The topic is which is the subtopic, engaging the Holy Ghost and planning for tomorrow. Let me make uh, three statements here. Number one, three statements here. <laughs> Halle, say with me, I've got an advantage. Advantage. Maybe a new song should come. Hallelujah. Titled, Advantage. Advantage. We need to. We need to. So that we can sing it to ourselves. Advantage. Advantage. You know, Ada, Ada uh, gave us a, an album, and she titled it "Future, Future, Future." So I think we should come up with this one. Advantage. Advantage. To remind God's children that they have advantage over the world. They have advantage over the world in planning for tomorrow. In planning, we have we cannot afford to plan like the world is foolishness. Engaging the Holy Ghost in planning for tomorrow. Number one, I make three statements in this uh, message. Number one, all we need in life, all we need in life, is wrapped up. In the Holy Ghost. All we need in life is wrapped up in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is the sum total, sum total of all we will ever need in life. The Holy Ghost is the sum total of all we will ever need in life. Going after the Holy Ghost is going after everything else. He so said, what do you mean by this? Do you, want, do you want promotion? It is with the Holy Ghost. All we need in life is wrapped up, wrapped up in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is the sum total of all we need in life. Going after the Holy Ghost is going after everything else. Going after the Holy Ghost is going after everything else. Let me explain. You know, the, the problem we have, you see a child of God pushing promotion. In his office, you are pushing promotion. And you push it, and you don't, the Holy Ghost will be more to look at this person. You see a child of God pushing, you think, listen, everything, car, houses, promotion, protection, Profit as a business person, strategy, 
everything is with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is the sum total of all we need in life. And I will prove it this morning. <laughs> Your food is with the Holy Ghost. Your breakthrough is with the Holy Ghost. Your celebration is with the Holy Ghost. Approving this morning. Engaging the Holy Ghost and planning for tomorrow. So that is the first statement. What are the scriptures to back up this statement? Now, this is where I want you to follow me carefully. Follow me carefully here. Matthew 7, verse 7, we read to 11. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 to 11. Now, listen, look at, look at this. Look at this. Ask, and it shall be given you. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened unto you. That is prayer, right? That is prayer. Verse 8. For everyone that asketh, receive it. And he that seeketh, find it. And he that knocketh, it shall be opened. Verse 9. Or what man is there of you, whom if his son shall ask bread, will give him a stone? Ten. Or if he shall ask a fish, will give him a serpent? Verse 11. Now watch this, verse 11. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts, Good gifts. What are these good gifts? Fish, bread, all those things you mentioned. And even car, whatever, promotion. If you can be, if you know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more? Say with me, how much more? Hmm. How much more? Now let me say this. If you've not read any of our books, go and read them. You know why I said that? The same way we have so many songs we have not released. Thank God for this first launch today. The same way we have many songs we have not released. We have many books. I mean, the books are coming to the glory of God like, without thinking, they're just pouring out. Why did I say that? It's a book I have. I've not released it. It's called More. It's called More. How much more? That's where it came out from. More. How to achieve more. How to get more. These books will bless you. So get some of our books that are out. Some of them are on Amazon. They will bless you. So how much more shall your father, now watch this, which is in heaven. Shall your father, which is in heaven, now watch this, watch this, look at it, look at it. Give good things. Look at the word. I want you to mark the word, good things. Give good things to them that ask him. So when you ask, God give you what? Good things. Now watch that. Good things. Good things. Hallelujah. Why did I say she mark the word good things? Because if you read the same account of this narrative in Luke chapter 11. Can you give us Luke chapter 11 from verse 9? Luke chapter 11. From verse 9. Notice something. The four Gospels, some things are repeated. Why? Be to give us different perspective to the same thing. To communicate different angles to the same story. Because, watch this. If, you're, if I'm your teacher, and I'm, 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 I am teaching you, there are things, and you are writing down, there are things some students will miss out while the other one will get that's, what the, that's the reason why we have the four Gospels. So that if you miss this, this other Gospel can explain it to you. It's not for repetition. No. It's for complete understanding. And look at how Luke 11 narrated the same thing. Luke 11 from verse 9. And I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Sounding like the same thing we read in Matthew chapter 7, right? The next verse. For everyone that asketh, receive it. 
and he that seeketh find it. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Sounds like the same thing we read in Matthew chapter 7, right? Next verse. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a store? Or if he shall ask a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Sounds like what we read the matter, right? Verse 12. Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? Sounds like the same thing. Now look at verse 13. Verse 13. Now, if you look at the last, this last verse, compare it with Matthew 7, 11. Now, let's do it now. This is the last verse now. Go back to Matthew 7, 11. Before I come back here, so I can bring it up again for you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Matthew 7, 11. Hallelujah. Say with me, I'm blessed. Oh, there, there, there is shower of blessing. Showers of blessing. He said, Matthew 7, 11. If ye then be evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children. Somebody is receiving gift this week. Somebody is receiving gifts this week. Somebody will send you gifts. Now, when I mean gift, give me something given to you. This week, people will give you things. Good things will come to you. Gifts of money will come to you. Thank you. If you then be evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven, what is this, give good things, man, the word, good things to them that ask him. Now go back to Luke 11 verse 13. Luke 11 verse 13. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We celebrate you. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Mala, Farah, Kushanel, Fish. Ha, thank you, Lord. Now look at verse 13. If ye then be evil, know how to give good gifts. Something like what you just read. Unto your children. How much more shall your Father, your Heavenly Father, give what? The Holy Ghost. He replaced good things with the Holy Ghost. He replaced good things. Give the Holy Ghost to them that ask. That tells us something. Every good thing you want in life is the Holy Ghost. He replaced good things with the Holy Ghost. Say with me. The good things I want in life are with the Holy Ghost. That's why I said all we need in life is wrapped up with the Holy Ghost. So any planning for good things, any planning for success that excludes the Holy Ghost is a plan that will not be successful for you as a Christian. Let this sink into your spirit. The good things I need are with the Holy Ghost. Say with me, all I need to get all I want is the Holy Ghost. Say it again. All I need to get all I want is the Holy Ghost. Engaging the Holy Ghost and planning for tomorrow. Listen, whatever you are planning, whatever you are planning, the Holy Ghost is the answer. If you involve Him, you see that that plan will succeed. Like people are sitting down and thinking about after uh, post COVID 19, what are they going to do? How are they going to run their business? Listen, that plan of success is with the Holy Ghost. Just go after the Holy Ghost, He will unveil the thing to you. Let me say this way the Holy Ghost is the, is the wrap for the good things we need in life. You can assess the good things without first opening up the Holy Ghost, if you understand what I mean. Number two statement, engaging the Holy Ghost and planning for tomorrow. Number two statement, now, you like to write this down. Everything about tomorrow, everything about tomorrow, the next moment, and the future, is with the Holy Ghost, because everything God knows is with the Holy Ghost. Let me repeat again. 
everything about tomorrow, comma, the next moment and the future is with the Holy Ghost. Because everything God knows is with the Holy Ghost. Everything God knows is with the Holy Ghost. Everything about tomorrow, the next moment, the future, is with the Holy Ghost. Everything about tomorrow. Because God, who knows everything, has handed everything he knows to the Holy Ghost. Because everything God knows is with the Holy Ghost. Now, give us John 16 from verse 12. John 16 from verse 12. We read verse 12 to 15. Everything. Because sometimes we just buy up the Holy Ghost. You see, people say, Father, Father, Father. See, the Father has given everything he knows to the Holy Ghost. So if you bypass the Holy Ghost, you can't assess what God knows. Now, let me, let me. I have yet many things to say unto you. So I have many things to say unto you. But you cannot bear them now. That is Jesus speaking. Verse 13. How be it? When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself. For whatsoever he shall hear, that he will speak. Whatever he shall hear. So it looks like the Holy Ghost is the connector between God and us. Between God and us. So whatsoever he shall hear, he shall say unto you. So why don't you be the one to hear it directly? You can't hear it directly. It has to come through the channel of the Holy Ghost. And it will show you things to come. The next verse, verse 14. Verse 14. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive. Can you see? He shall receive of mine. He shall receive of mine and show it to you. So by passing the Holy Ghost, is by passing everything God wants to say. He shall receive of mine and show it to you. Verse 15. Verse 15. All things. Now, <laughs> mark that verse. That's why I said, all that God knows is with the Holy Ghost. He said, all things that the Father has are mine. Therefore said, that he shall take off mine and show it to you. Listen, if you're a Christian, you are planning without the Holy Ghost. You are planning to fail. 1 Corinthians 2 from verse 9, proving the same point. 1 Corinthians 2 from verse 9. 1 Corinthians 2 from verse 9. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Everything about the next moment, the future, is with the Holy Ghost because everything God knows is with the Holy Ghost. But as it is written, eyes have not seen, nor ears have. Neither has it entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Things which God has prepared. Verse 10. But. Say with me, but. You see, he said, eyes have not seen. So, listen. Oh my God. That, listen. You, you are going around asking people, what do you think? What do you think? Eh, this business I have. Eh, hey, what do you think? What do you think? Eh, hmm. I'm not saying don't consult. I'm not saying don't consult. Consult, but consult after God has told you the plan. It's like God wants you to go to the UK. You have never been there before. Do you go about asking people which country you will go to before you God tells you to go to the UK? You don't go, you don't do that. Because if you are going about, where do you think I should go? Where do you think I should go? They will tell you to go to India. They will tell you to go to US. Whereas God wants you to go to UK. So you first go to God. Get the plan. It is UK. Because it's future. Then you now go to man and ask, how do you go to UK? That's what I'm saying. Look at that verse 9 again. I need to sink this down. Because you see, Christians, listen, Christian businessmen, 
engaging the strategies, statisticians, engaging people who can forecast. Eh? Engaging, you pay millions of dollars on Naira to go for seminar to get a business idea. Is something wrong with you? That's the method of the world. And listen to me, we have an advantage. No man compared to no. Look at this. Say, but eyes have not seen that plan. Nobody knows it. Eyes have not seen it. No intelligent man has seen it. Say, eyes have not seen. It. Ears have not heard. Neither has he entered the heart of men. The things God has prepared for your glory. But look at verse ten. He said, but. Say with me, but. But God has revealed them to us by His Spirit. Look at the word Spirit. His Spirit there is. S is capital by his spirit. Now listen, I've had people say, eh, you know, when we talk about kingdom world, uh, talk about uh, if it's titan that makes people rich, why are the unbelievers are richer than Christians? You have people talking things out of ignorance. The richest countries in the world are not religious countries. The richest country in the world, they are, they, are, they are Buddhist. They don't worship God, and yet they are very rich. Listen to me. The reason why we are victims is because we have neglected our advantage and followed their own way. A fish running or jumping with a monkey should not expect to win. Look at the board, the board and the monkey on a on a on a on a race track. Listen up. This is a board, this is a monkey, this is a lion on a race track. And they say, on your mark, get set, go. Monkey is hopping. Lion is running. And the board wants to be running and doing like monkey. Will he ever win? Take over and fly! And you see you're there. Take off and fly. Mm -hmm. Listen. Live in the world the way God will tell you to live. I had this very humbling testimony. Now, I'm looking at our time. Wherever we'll stop, we'll continue next week. This humbling testimony that very instructive. The great man of God uh, can I hear again? Told us of this story, which I also read in his book, that uh, this Christian businessman <laughs> who never, never lost any business or made any business error, everything he invested was successful. In fact, when people think he will invest in a very lucrative investment uh, scheme, he pulls away. And let people see the thing will crash. You know? When they ask the man, what is your secret? Obviously, he has been in contact with the great man, can he again, and has learned how to be led by the Spirit of God. You know what he does? Before making any decision, a rich businessman, before making any business decision, he doesn't invite his specialists and strategists and business advisors. He doesn't do that. He doesn't bring them on the board table and say, what do you think? No. He goes into his house, he has a room. He locked himself for three days, praying and communing with God. What is the next plan? How do you want me to invest? Where do you... He said he will be there for three days until God will speak to him, he will come out and he will implement it. And it is a goal. What are you saying? Why are we living? Do we in the world? We are not of the world. Didn't you hear that? Though we are in the world, we are not of the world. He said, come out among them and be ye separate. <laughs> oh, goodness. Thank you, Lord Jesus. If you play the game of the world, they will win you. He said, but, verse 10, but, God has revealed 
them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit, that's what I'm going to. For the spirit. Notice the spirit. The S is after. For the spirit. Meaning is the Holy Ghost. For the spirit searcheth all things. All things. Yeah. The deep things of God. The deep, no, the deep things of God. Now, now, look at the next verse. Verse 11. Verse 11. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of a man, which is in him? Even so, even so, even so, the, the things of God knoweth no man. The things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God shall glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. The things of God knowing them by the Spirit. That's why I say, everything about tomorrow, the next moment, and the future is with the Holy Ghost. It's with, it's with the Holy Ghost because everything God knows is with the Holy Ghost. So going after the Holy Ghost is going after the mind of God. And the mind of God knows everything about tomorrow because God declares the end from the beginning. So it's wisdom to plan. the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. The number three point I'll make here, remember the topic is engaging the Holy Ghost and planning for tomorrow. Number three point here, the reason why we have the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, dwelling in us and upon us, the reason why we have the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, dwelling in us and upon us. It's not just for us to speak in tongues. It's not just for us to speak in tongues or to live an anointed life, but also to know and to assess the mind of God about tomorrow. Let me repeat it again. Number three. The reason why we have the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, dwelling in us and upon us is not just for us to speak in tongues or to have to live an anointed life but also to know and to assess the mind of God about tomorrow to know and to assess the mind of God about tomorrow now watch this what scripture this scripture just put the first Corinthians 2 verse 9 to 12 now look I will stop at verse 11 now go to the verse 12 you see something there, verse 12. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Verse 12, he said, Now we have received, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. Why? That we might, that we might, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. That we might. So one of the reasons why we have the Holy Ghost is to know and to assess the mind of God concerning to me. Why not make use of that? Why not make use of all that? The Holy Ghost is a specialist in leading us concerning the next moment. The Holy Ghost is a specialist in leading us concerning the next moment. The next moment. The next moment. Peter is a witness. In Acts chapter 10 from verse 9 to 20, you see it clearly. The next moment. And all of the men of God in the Bible, is it Paul? Is it Philip? The ready to see, is it the Lord Jesus? The Holy Ghost is a specialist in leading us about tomorrow. As a roundup, let me make this statement here. Let me, let me make this statement here. There are two things that makes us there are two things that makes us enjoy the privileges of sonship. Write it down. There are two things that makes us enjoy the privileges of sonship. There 
there are two things that makes us enjoy the privileges of being a child of God. There are two things. Number one, new birth. Number one, new birth. New birth. There are two things that makes us enjoy the privileges of being a child of God. Number one is new birth. New birth. John 1, verse 12. John 1, verse 12. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. You are worthy of our praise. La koshika la bradi benesa nama kush. He says, but as many as received him, what is that? New birth. To them he gave the right, the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So if you want to enjoy the privileges of being a, of, of the children of God, get born again, be born again. If you're not born again, you cannot enjoy the privileges of being a child of God. So if you are listening to me, you are not yet a child of God. This is time to receive Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. Very important. But you notice something. That is, this is where many of us stop. I'm a child of God. 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 I'm a child. You'll be singing and you'll be wondering why you're not experiencing the reality of that song. You'll be wondering why are the things happening to unbelievers still happening to you? I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. They are actually a child. You are experiencing the same thing. They are involved in accidents. They are pulling. Hey, Jesus. Hey. This today now, COVID 19. COVID 19 is devilish. I will pray that it will not continue. It, it can't. It can't. Wherever it came from, back to the pit of hell, ceases to operate. But do you notice something? Virtually every everyone is a victim. Both Christians and unbeliever. Christians' business, unbeliever businesses are affected equally. Why? Why? Because the second thing that makes us enjoy the privileges of a child of God has been grossly, largely neglected. And what is the number two thing? Spirit leading. Spirit leading. I said there are two things that makes us enjoy the privilege of being a child of God. New birth, being born again. And second one is spirit leading. The leading of the Holy Spirit. Romans 8, 14. Romans 8, verse 14. Say, may God forbid. Say it. Say it. I will not experience what unbelievers experience. Say it. The lot of the wicked shall not rest on, 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 on the righteous. The rod of the wicked shall not rest on the lot of the righteous. No. Say with me, I will not be destroyed with blood testing men. What happens to others will not happen to me because I'm a child of God. What is the key? Spirit leading. Now look at this. Everybody watch. Now look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Romans 8 14. For as many, for as many are led by the Spirit. Spirit there is capital S of God. They are the sons of God. They are the sons of God. So it's not the look at what I wrote here. Live, now listen to this. Living your life only as a child of God is 50% Christianity. Living your life only as a child of God is 50% Christianity. But living your life as a child of God who is led by the Spirit of God is 100% Christianity. Let me repeat it again. Living your life only as a child of God is 50% Christianity. But living your life as a child of God who is led by the Holy Ghost is 100% Christianity. So it's time to engage this advantage you have. And planning tomorrow. 
Now, next week, I'm going to, there's a scripture I'm going to debunk. There's a scripture that is causing big error. And the reason why it's causing big error is misinterpretation. And who has misinterpreted it? Motivational speakers. Motivational speakers that have crept in our midst and use the principles of the world to interpret the Bible. I'm going to debunk it next week, Sunday. Concerning planning. Because they will read it and use it to and use and use and use worldly principle attached to the scripture and God's children are running with it and falling into the ditch. God forbid. From today it changes. Say with me, Amen. Let me end by saying this. Now, next week topic is still planning for tomorrow part three. Planning for tomorrow part three. But the topic is how to plan with the Holy Ghost. How to plan with the Holy Ghost. How to plan. Because since we know we need to plan with the Holy Ghost, we need to know how to plan. So don't miss it for anything. How to plan with the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So let's end here this morning. Next week, we continue. Lift up your hands and say, Lord, I've neglected the Holy Ghost too long. Holy Ghost, I'm sorry. Wherever you are, now say it. Speak to the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, I've neglected you for too long. Today, I confess my negligence. I confess my arrogance. Forgive me, Spirit of the living God. Forgive me. Say it. Say it. Forgive me. And I pray for today. Come back to me. Help me. Help me. Help me to partner with you, my friend. Holy Ghost will repent. Holy Ghost will say we are sorry for our arrogance and negligence. We are sorry from today. We ask for your partnership. We want to work with you in every planning of our life. Help us. Help us. Open our ears to hear. Our eyes to see. Our heart to perceive. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. I believe you have been blessed mightily. Thank you for joining us. I want to invite you on Thursday. Already you've had. Next Sunday is going to be super awesome. How to plan with the Holy Ghost. And I'm going to debunk a misinterpreted scripture that the motivational speakers have created, leading us, many of us, astray. Now, we want to invite you on Thursday for our midweek service. We are dealing on a series that is so important the believers work of victory. We have been called into the life of victory. You need to learn how to work in victory by their kind of lifestyle you need. So, this Thursday, 6 p.m. to 7.15. Then on Friday, we're having Bible question and answer. Very sorry that it, it didn't hold last Friday, but this Friday is going to be holding and it's going to be awesome. Invite your friends and uh, believe God to have a great time. I speak over your life. This is a great week for you. All the good things God has spoken concerning your life, this new week shall come to pass. All the prophetic words shall come to pass. New things are happening in your life. New stage for you right now. Gifts are released over your life. In the name of Jesus, I speak over your life. You are not a victim, but a victor. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Can we rise up and say, Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of God forever and ever. We will say, Amen. Remember, we are launching this new track this week, so yeah, watch out for the 5 to 10 minutes or so broadcast where we will give you the link by the grace of God. Peace unto you. Say me, there shall no evil before me. Neither shall any plague come near my dwelling. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Peace. Amen.